<laughs> yeah, can't do. That's a beast of a wall, eh? <laughs> yeah, we can swim over the lake and go down. Welcome back, everybody. As you might have guessed, the visibility isn't actually that good today. But in the shallows, it's still really crisp and clear. Anything deeper than 20 meters, you start to lose visibility. It goes pasty and white. There's a fair few filter feeders here. This is a cable that stretched across from a pontoon to the rock face. This is only about a metre of water. Probably ideal conditions for this type of sea life. Check how milky that is down at 20 metres. Check out all these. These are called Neptune's heart sea squirts. This solitary white species grows up to about 120 mil tall. It's flower shaped and very warty on the surface with openings in the side and the top. These are only found in the extreme southwest of British Isles and they also favour sheltered areas with little tidal movement. Hence that's why they're in this quarry. Check out this feather duster worm. It's larger and more elaborate spiral of tentacles than the peacock tube worm. surprising there's so many sea squirts on this wall. The water is literally no tidal stream, it's ideal conditions. You normally find these sea squirts on the side of pontoons in harbours or somewhere where there's very little tidal movement. I think these are Siona intestinalis. As we swim anti-clockwise around this quarry, the sea wall and sea floor changes yet again. This is covered in what looks like a green snot. It's a very fine seaweed. If you look very carefully as we just jump in, you see this fish swim past us. It's really not scared of anyone. It's about five pound, decent sized pollock. He 
In storms, you tend to get bushes or hedges or parts of tree that fall into the quarry. This, in turn, gets absorbed or grown on by all the organisms in the water. This looks like something out of Beetlejuice to me. During the quarrying days, it would have had an access road into the bottom of the quarry. This area is at the top of this access road. Now we're coming up into the shallower waters. And you can see here, the variety of fish haven't changed, but maybe the collars have. One of our aims for this dive was to try and catch some clams. These clams have been in here for possibly 30, 35 years. So we're just finding some. Mm, looks like them, um, but when you pick them up, there's nothing inside. So you can actually tell if one's still alive because of the sand around the outside of it is a little bit black or, or it's in a clear area. Sometimes you even can see when the clams, when you go close to them, they sense you're there, or possibly see you're there, and they blow out a little puff of, of sand and close up. Not quite sure what this thing is. Some sort of sea squirt. Doesn't really show up that well on the camera, but it's almost like a luminous green. All sorts of variety of species have got into this quarry over the years. Possibly when they pump the, the clean or the fresh salt water back in from the sea. This one looks good. Is this a live one? I tried crushing it between my fingers to see if I can get the shell open. Take a look at this. It's like an axle off a van or a truck or something. It's getting absorbed by all the sea life. We're still trying to figure out where these clams like to hide. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just moving the cover of seaweed away. At the moment, the whole seabed seems to be covered in a, a green, healthy green, sea lettucey sort of um, seaweed. Just checking my time. See, here, there's loads of shells that are broken. These are broken because crabs have had them. So crabs have either found them uh, and dug them up or possibly they've even just died but I think it's the crabs that I've had them looking by the debris of the shells I've had a bit of success with three so far you can't tell here but your buoyancy is really key in this shallow water if I push my hand down hard enough it'd probably sink I don't know at least five or six inches into this silt and if you put your hand in and pull it out it's absolutely black so I'm trying to just hover across the seabed whilst doing the camera and just wafting the, the seaweed out of the way is this another baby? problem with these ones I find on the surface I tend to find they're uh, a closed shell and there's nothing inside there we go it wasn't one the ones that uh, are good to me are, you just see the backs of them, so like what would be the hinge would just be sticking out the sand a tiny little bit. That's where I found out I've had my success with finding live ones. Matt is uh, having a better success story over to my left. Basically there's a pontoon that's floating and because the sea uh, we see we can't grow because there's no light under the pontoon, he's finding it nice and easy to pick out these these live clams. Is this another one? Looks like it. I think that's it for today. 
I think I'll have to settle with four. And even one of these four, I'm a little bit dubious. Check out that Hydro Medusa to the left of the screen there. There's a few of these as we're swimming around. I've never seen snake lock an enemy so dumpy and short and so thick, like really thick um, tentacles on them. When all this green algae dies off, it can actually be pretty bad for your health. I read an article not long ago that in St. Michel and Grave, a horse rider lost consciousness and his horse died after breathing in the seaweed's fumes. Basically, it produces uh, hydrogen sulfide when it's decomposing. Also, a lorry driver driving a load of decomposing sea lettuce passed out and crashed and died from the toxic fumes. The larger, flatter pieces of the sea lettuce, these are actually edible. They really don't look too healthy, these. Maybe it's just the water temperature at the moment. Certainly not moving much. And that's it. After 56 minutes, we're starting to get cold. So we make our way out. Oh, there's daylight. <laughs> As always, thanks for coming along and watching, thanks for joining us on this dive, and I'll catch you on the next tide.